This is for the Ethics Review class at Parker University. In starting a new business, one of the first decisions the business owner should make is which type of business entity to use. As I talk about business entities, we're going to talk about some of the basic types of different entities. The simplest and least expensive form is a sole proprietorship. Uh, simplest when multiple owners is a partnership. A corporation or a limited liability company will provide protection from, limit, from uh, personal liability, but it will also be somewhat more expensive to organize. We'll talk in one of the future videos about multiple owners and some of the protections that should be in place to protect you if you go into a business with more than one owner. And then lastly, I'll give you a very quick overview about buying and selling a business. So for this video, let's focus, focus on sole proprietorships. Uh, the benefit of a sole proprietorship is it is very inexpensive. It's very simple. Essentially, the business is not distinguished from the individual who owns and runs the practice. Uh, many chiropractic practices are organized this way. Now, the disadvantage of it is it gives you no protection from personal liability because there's no distinction between the business and the individual who runs it. That means that anybody, any patient or any uh, a vendor or creditor who makes a claim against the business is also going to be able to pursue the personal assets of the individual owner. Now, that may be a frightening thought, and certainly that's something to avoid. But if you don't have any assets, sole proprietorship may be an acceptable thing or an acceptable practice or acceptable. I'll get it right eventually. A sole proprietorship may be an acceptable way to organize your practice if you don't have any assets other than some assets that are exempt from seizure. But once your business gets going, and you start to accumulate some assets and accumulate some sources of income, you need to change out of a sole proprietorship into some type of business entity that will give you some protection from liability. So how do you form or start a sole proprietorship? If the sole proprietorship will use a, a name other than the owner's name, you need to file an assumed name certificate. You file that certificate with the county clerk's office in Texas. Uh, county clerk's office generally charge about twenty to thirty dollars for filing that. It's a short form. It's uh, usually one to two pages. It's going to ask what's the name of the business and address of the business, what's the name and address of the owner of the business, uh, and that'll need to be signed and notarized and filed in the county records, and that creates the business as far as a sole proprietorship. When it comes to tax time. The sole proprietor is going to file the same Form 1040 that everybody else files, but they're going to attach a Schedule C that's going to reflect the income and the expenses of the business. Uh, so it's important, even as a sole proprietor, to keep good records of your business income and expenses so you can file your taxes appropriately. Once a sole proprietorship reaches a point where they decide or need to hire employees, they need to apply to the IRS for an employer identification number. That way they have a number, a taxpayer ID number, other than their personal social security number. If you're trying to protect the secrecy or privacy of your personal social security number, it may be a good idea to apply for an EIN or employer identification number even before you plan to have employees so that the business, the sole proprietorship, may have a tax ID number separate from the individual's social security number. When you have employees, you're also required to register with the Texas Workforce Commission. Texas Workforce Commission is the agency that pays unemployment compensation. And the way they fund that compensation program is they collect a small percentage of the wages paid by every business in Texas. When you register with the Workforce Commission, they will expect that you file returns with them and that you pay that, that percentage uh, uh, of the wages. When you hire new employees, it's also important to complete the Form I-9 uh, to help confirm 
that the person is eligible to work in the United States. If you hire illegal aliens, people who are not in the United States legally, or people who are here but do not have authorization to work, uh, the employer, the business owner, may be liable, criminally liable, for hiring that person. So you want to protect yourself by going through the steps of completing this form. Uh, that form is pretty readily available. It's called a Form I-9, pretty readily available on the Internet. It's only a few pages long, and I think the instructions are fairly complete. Um, you're not required as a chiropractor to have an x-ray machine, but if you choose to have an x-ray machine and use it as part of your practice, you need to make sure you have the registration for that uh, x-ray with the Texas Department of Health. So as you can see, forming a sole proprietorship, if all you need to do is file that assumed name certificate, it's about a $20 to $30 filing fee. It costs very little to get started. It doesn't require any kind of formality to run the business. The uh, 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 It's a very easy way to start your business uh, uh, at the beginning, but it may not be appropriate once you start to accumulate assets that you want to protect, personal assets that you want to protect.